I'm Dr. Hanson with Geeks Out. And I'm Daniel Villarreal with TollRoad.com. So what brings us to the couch today? What is this episode of Joystick all about? You know, it has to do with actually comment moderation and the overall of comment systems, kind of how you filter out hate speech and deal with, you know, kind of hate and problems online. That's a great conversation. What brings us here? Anything particular? Yeah, so this last week, uh, Popular Science and YouTube both kind of overhauled their comment system. Uh, Popular Science basically shut down comments on all except for a few of their articles, saying that uh, negative comments and uh, comments which kind of cast opinion on scientific fact uh, actually reduce people's reading comprehension and understanding of an article. So they actually felt the comments in some cases were making their job of teaching science a lot harder. Very counterproductive. Yeah, exactly. Where as far as YouTube goes, I mean, listen to Macklemore's song, Same Love. I mean, have you have you read the YouTube comments lately? Oh my God, they're terrible. They're, they're basically a cesspool for misogyny, racism, uh, you know, homophobia, and violent threat. And so they actually introduced a system where you can, a, a, a video uploader can enter in certain keywords to sort of filter out comments that say have the words like dyke or tranny or nigger. You can sort of filter those words out. Um, you know, it remains to be seen, though, whether that system will also allow some of the more creative or stupid smell spellings of these slurs to get through, like, you know, nigger with one G or dyke, D-I-K-E. Uh, if there's a will, there's a way. Indeed. Trolls can be very creative. Um, trolls? We'll, we'll get to that. A quick thing. Uh, this also comes on the heels of IGN and GameSpot. Uh, and Kotaku, right? And Kotaku, yeah, uh, revising their comment systems in which they basically said the editors were going to take a very conservative effort to make sure to uh, moderate, delete, and even ban uh, hate speech from their sites. Uh, they said you can have, you know, you can argue the merits of a thing, but you can be civil. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, GameSpot especially had a problem with this, where they had a transgender game reviewer, Carolyn Pettit. She, the, people started hating on her in the comments. So one person made some sort of comment along the lines of, I like my women like I like my video games, without a dick. Which is like, oh. what does that have to do with anything? Uh, anyhow, so so there was so there's a lot of websites that are taking this time right now to really uh, revamp how we use and view comments. Right. Yeah. To, to cut down on misinformation and hate speech, and I think you're going to continue to see this trend with a lot of other companies. You know that 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 that, you know, that take it on because it eventually reflects poor on your community and reflects poor on your product. You know, so there's a real imperative to do it. This is a really important conversation right now. Knowing about a little bit earlier, you, you had mentioned trolls, and the problem is, is right yeah. now troll has a really wide reaching umbrella term. Uh, actually, uh, when I when I think of troll, I immediately think, and this is more about me. I'll be the first one to admit it. But I think of like older men that won't take the hint, like they won't take no for an answer. And I'm thinking mainly in like <clears throat> bathhouses and things like that, where <laughs> people just don't take the hint that they're not interested. I find them harmless but annoying. You know, uh, troll is an ageist term that's typically been used in the gay community to refer to an older guy who you know is hitting on you. Uh, but you know, troll is also referred to the monsters underneath the Billy Goats Gruff Bridge. Uh, uh, again, uh, harmless and annoying, kind of. They ate Billy Goats. There I'm not a Billy Goat. I don't care. Um, you you are a Billy Goat among men, sir. Uh, uh, and then also uh, trolls tend to refer to people who – it's kind of a too-encompassing term that yeah. anyone who say like Rick rolls you by putting a link up to Obama's secret sex tape and Wait, all of a sudden – what's, what's Rick rolling? Uh, Rick rolling is when you deliberately link to Rick Astley's video like never going to let you down, never going to turn you up, never going to turn you out and hurt you. I don't know the actual lyrics, but – I feel like we could have an entire episode just about Rick rolling. You totally could. <laughs> um, and so I don't know why – Everyone links to a song, but it's, it's hilarious. Uh, but trolling is also applied to things like uh, uh, people, you know, leaving hateful, violent threats. Toward. Very vitrolic. Yeah, I mean, but like also threatening the personal safety, you know, and threatening rape against, say, like women uh, video game make and Anita Scarsesian, a woman who's been doing a lot of studies over uh, women in video gaming, uh, has received like multiple death, rape threats, things like that. Like, and it's uncalled for, you know, and it's really personally threatening. This is some serious shit. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so it, what I'm saying is using the word troll to range from lighthearted Rick rolling to serious shit. It's too broad. It's way too broad. At least so says Whitney Phillips, uh, a, PH, uh, a digital and media studies PhD who's been writing with the Daily Dot and who's written a lot about kind of trolling. What she says is that we need a more specific term like online aggression because when you use that, it basically forces you to question who was doing online aggression, where, in what context, how are they aggressive? Could we call that online aggressor like an orc? And and maybe we now have this giant list of troll orcs, goblins, wraiths. Uh, depending on what you're exactly doing. Yeah, so like trolls might be like kind of like a 
just Rick Rollers, but like orcs might be sort of like racist or homophobic. Yeah, a goblin could be an articulate um, hater. Yeah, someone who like raises good arguments but is still kind of a dirty shit. <laughs> and then Wraith could be a, a malevolent predator. Oh my god, so you basically create like a Lord of the Rings type taxonomy depending on how horrible you are to your fellow hobbits and riders of Rohan. I think that's exactly what uh, we need in our society. Well, yeah, that's why online aggressor, aggressor is such an important uh, term. We call them orcs. <laughs> that's why it's important for us to be, to be able to identify orcs and goblins and other types of online aggression uh, uh, you know, correctly. Basically, you can't say that everyone that sort of offends you or everyone that you know, sort of disagrees with you or is unpleasant is de facto a troll that deserves to be banned or censored. I mean, sometimes you in actuality, like, you might be a jerk as a commenter too. I mean, you might be like someone who has a lot of racial privilege or economic privilege or you, know, you say something against uh, you know, HIV people or transgender people out of like ignorance. I think we've all crossed the line. I think we can all say we've crossed the line. Yeah, and, and to think that that would either ruin the rest of your life or that you should be banned outright, like, is, is, is really kind of too much. And so, um, you know, what does Whitney say? Does she have any suggestions about this? She has two suggestions. One has to do, uh, it's a game she calls Shutting the Asshole Down, in which yeah. you basically ban an outright, you know, call it out, hammer it, ban it, and just you don't take that crap, you don't moderate it, because all trolls basically want an audience. And if you deprive them of that audience, then, you know, or all online aggressors want an audience. Go find another bridge, Billy Goats. <laughs> Meh. Um, Whereas uh, the second thing she recommends is sometimes you just need to dox these people. And doxing, of course, dox. Of, uh, it's what 4chan and Anonymous do to people who are kind of online haters. It basically means that you publish public information about them, their, their actual identity, sometimes their home address, where they work, and like you basically create a campaign against them. Um, but Cyber vigilantism. It is actually, yeah, that vigilantism is a really good word for it, you know, but it, it, I, I don't know that it's a perfect solution, really. Well, it's funny. When I think of vigilantism, I, of course, think of Batman and I think of Dark Knight. And I feel like the, in that situation, there was a void that was, uh, wasn't was being filled until uh, Harvey Dent came along. But as we need a Harvey Dent in the online community world. We need someone that's fixing it. Uh, there's clearly, we need to change something about how we comment with each other and how we moderate commenters. And until we have a legal or a social standard, uh, we are going to continue to Batman people, I think. Well, the, what do you think is kind of the legal or social standard? Like, I agree with you. We need moderation or, you know, we need a way to fix the system because, you know, sometimes you end up doxing innocent people who have nothing to do with the Sandy Hook shooter was misidentified. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, the, yeah, it, it problems happen. But what, what, what are the counter solutions? You know, I mean, short of a law. I mean, there are now cyberbullying laws and things kind of coming up for that. But like, what could the average citizen or, 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 or website do? I think what we all need is a big dose of patience. I mean, it, it, you can, in this day and age, react so quickly to something that you disseminate misinformation, mm -hmm. like we've just talked about. Um, that could be journalistic or with cyber vigilantism. Mm -hmm. The idea that we are too, uh, we knee jerk to everything. Yeah, everyone wants to be the first to comment on and report something without actually, like, say, like verifying or listening or thinking about it or giving the person even a chance to respond. Mm -hmm. We just jump on it and we say hater and boycott and you know just all of that. It, you're right. There's a there's a lot of boycott boycott that stuff. Um, yeah, it's 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 really stupid. Um, so what if there was a way to um, uh, correct. You, you mentioned a good point, like a, uh, creating a hashtag, like unverified. Uh, you know, if there's a piece of unverified information where you want to report it, but you're not really sure if it's true, it's important for you to kind of get the information out there so people can turn it over, examine it, want, see if it's true, but you're not putting it out there as fact. You're not saying, you know, so-and-so is actually the, per the Sandy Hook shooter. You're not saying so-and-so is actually a fact. You're off the record, on the record kind of a thing. Yes. Hashtag unverified. Yeah, hashtag unverified. But like, it's really unfortunate that people can, their entire lives can be ruined because of something that they, they did. On purpose and uh, on accident or on accident, giving them a chance to uh, correct their mistake. I think is that that currently does not exist. And so when you don't have that option, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, uh, I think some people have said, you know, that you could issue redactions, say on old tweets or whatever, and kind of link back to the old tweet or that old comment. Um, there might also be some way to kind of do sort of a public penance where, you know, you, you, you can comment on the, on a tweet or on a thing you did earlier and kind of just amend it and say, Hey, everyone, you know, and whoever originally received that comment or commented on it would be notified. And that would be kind of a part of public digital record to let them know that, you know, you tried to make amends for what you did, or you had a second thought. Uh, it's weird because, you know, right now, whenever someone says, uh, you know, 
know, something against, say, the gay community, like, let's say, Barilla, the pasta maker this week, who said that um, he was like, I will never feature a gay couple in any of my gay family in any of my commercials. I boycott! Boycott that shit. It should be a kind of digital way to sort of make penance. It's weird because usually anyone who makes anti-gay comments uh, will just end up giving to some sort of LGBT group a certain amount of money, and they're like, look, it makes it okay, right? I totally gave. Uh, and it's like, and is that all we need? I mean, what does a digital penance actually look like compared to just, you know, outright shaming the person publicly? Uh, it's just, I, I feel like we could do that. I feel like we need to have some, like, uh, online judge that makes, like, 47 Hail Marys and you don't get to be on Facebook for three months. Sort of a digital confessor. I like that. We were talking last week about online digital, uh, you know, games. First person forgiveness games. Right, exactly. And so maybe we create a sort of digital church where in public, you know, you can sort of recant and also atone for your online sins. That There might actually be something to that. There is. And, and the church is a great example to follow. I mean, they just... Uh, um, apologize to Galileo what last week so I think yeah, this is exactly they're really progressive I think they actually said that uh, we need to take a few more pages from the Catholic Church <laughs> Boycott! Boycott that shit. Daniel, this sounds a lot like censorship, and in a way it is. It is a type of censorship. And that's not bad, I don't think. We're not talking about, like, burning books or anything. God, no. Um, at the heart of the matter, though, it, it really is about accountability. Right, in what way? Making people... Uh, accountable to their words and statements, making them realize that there's consequences for that. I think uh, a solution would be to, before you comment on anything, you'd have to sign in with your Facebook account. Uh, Everyone's doing that these days anyways. You're right, absolutely right. You know so if I comment on something on Kotaku and I want to use really vitriolic words like tranny and dicks and cut it off and I'm going to rape you, blah, 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 uh, that would be DR Manhansen. Right. That's fucked up. I don't want my mom seeing that. Maybe I shouldn't be friends with my mom on Facebook, but that's another conversation. Things like that. It's accountability. Right. You know, um, th that becomes pro problematic, though, if you think about like, that everyone on the web has to be accountable and have like an online profile, just especially when you think of like repressive governments, like even in China, where uh, government dissidents are being arrested and like thrown in jail or, you know, disappeared because of like their criticism of government activity. If, if they can find your name and, and, and there's no anonymity whatsoever, then you could be punished for that's what that's very different. Different, I think uh, you, you very valid points, but that's very different that we're not talking about that We're talking about hate speech in America. Where does that leave? Um, th th the future of hate speech is there a future of hate speech? You know, it's interesting because uh, actually William Shatner did a recent uh, Reddit, uh, Ask Me Anything, an AMA, and he was kind of befuddled and, 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 and <laughs> amazed by the comment system, namely that like the idea of upvoting or downvoting uh, in Reddit communities sometimes mean that the best stuff doesn't always rise to the top. Sometimes it's just racist, hateful, mean fucking comments that get all the way to the top. What does upvote mean? Is that your Shatner? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I love it. Oh uh, yes. What what is this? Up upvote. I'm a rocket man. Rocket man. Burning up all the shoes that I've ever owned. He, he was disappointed that that a lot of this sort of vitriolic garbage was actually being voted to the top of Reddit, especially when you consider that like President Obama's done an AMA on Reddit. Reddit's becoming actually a very influential kind of web engine uh, for discussion and like political change. And so even in supposedly progressive or like cutting edge communities, hate speech is sometimes valued or treasured. I mean, like, sir, are we saying that we should want to stomp it out everywhere and that everywhere should be like you have a face and, you know, um, because there's actually a long celebrated American history of kind of anonymous uh, subversion and being able to maintain contain some, you know, hidden in the shadows type of things. The, there is a line, and I think people are crossing it right now. I, I feel like, I don't think there needs to be a future for hate speech. I really don't. There are some hate speech needs to go away. Police, you are now the thought police, policing my 1984 robo-justice. And now here's a little joy for your stick. 